At Randolph Air Force Base in Texas, Mary Beth Pisano only has one house rule. Enter at your own risk. You can smell that immediately. The home exactly as the family left it a month ago after a test came back showing the home had become a petri dish for mold and forced the family to flee to temporary housing. Is it everywhere? Every room. Mm. Every room. Your eyes will feel it, the back of your throat. The microscopic mold spores hidden in the air, the walls, and their furniture. A clean home score, 2,000 mold spores or less. The sample gathered at the Pisanos, more than 63,000. They say the cause, raw sewage. It was all flooding under this house for months. You had sewage raw, under your home. Raw sewage, eight inches of raw sewage under our home. And that's when we had to pack a suitcase and leave. The Pisano home, one of more than 32,000 managed by Hunt, the largest private military housing developer in the nation. Now the Pisanos are suing, joining other military families in a group lawsuit against Hunt. Some, like the Hyatts, unable to afford leaving the very homes they call health hazards. We're going to lose our mattresses. We're going to lose our furniture. Do you feel trapped? Yes. Nationwide, nearly two dozen families have filed lawsuits against private military housing companies, accused of mismanaging homes for countless military families. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Air Force Chief Christopher Lantain calls the problem systemic. We want to gain trust back with, with the military families, and we do it through um, increased accountability and increased oversight on the Air Force side. Hunt would not comment on the litigation, but in a statement to NBC News, Hunt says they take these matters extremely seriously and are focused on providing residents with healthy homes. They say they are introducing reforms to the program to improve living conditions in accordance with EPA and CDC guidelines. For the Pisanos, justice will likely come too late. He made this home and then it, this home made us sick, this home made us leave, this home made us lose our home. A loss fueling a new battle. For those who promise to serve. Morgan Chesky, NBC News, San Antonio. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is nasty. Dead animals and some walls, mold all over the place. These are the conditions that military families say that they have been dealing with while living on a military base. Part of a systemic problem affecting families on installations around the country. Channel 2 Samantha Manning investigates that most of this housing is not run by the military, but by private companies with lengthy contracts. From leaky ceilings to mold in nearly every room, my children like have been breathing this in to this disturbing discovery by an inspector she found dead animals in my wall bits and cavities these families say life in military housing at fort belvoir in virginia has been filled with frustration and fear brianna bragg's husband is in the army and they have two young kids rachel vdot's husband is in the air force they have five kids ages nine and under it's it's very hard it's very hard both women tell me they had to live in these conditions for more than a month before they were placed in temporary housing. Like so many military families, they rely on a housing allowance from the military and they can't afford to move off base. Why is it acceptable for us to live in these situations when my husband has deployed seven times? Even though these military families live in housing on the base itself, it's actually run by a business contracted through the military a private company called the Michaels Organization is in charge of managing these homes. That company is now being sued by some other Fort Belvoir residents over similar housing complaints. It's a problem impacting other bases run by different companies, too. Earlier this year, a Senate investigation exposed ongoing problems at privatized military housing. It's just not fair. The Michaels Organization declined our request for an on-camera interview. In a statement, a spokesperson told us in part, quote, Fort Belvoir residential communities and our local management team work diligently to promptly resolve any issues. We have established procedures and protocols in place that include independent and government inspections and oversight to ensure necessary repairs are completed successfully. But Army officials from the Pentagon paint a much different picture. An Army spokesperson told me a recent tenant satisfaction survey for Fort Belvoir gave the Michaels organization a score of 68.8, which is below average. Because of that, the company has until the end of the month to submit a corrective action plan. 
Still, the Army says if the company demonstrates, quote, substantial progress in resolving those issues, the Army won't have reason to terminate its contract with the company. As for the residents in need of help, a Fort Belvoir spokesperson says there is a 24-hour hotline to report issues, but Bragg and VDOT argue there still isn't enough oversight. There's nobody really willing right now to make them do the right things. Home is supposed to be a safe place. Why aren't we safe? Why aren't we being taken care of? Questions both of these families are still waiting to have answered. In Washington, Samantha Manning, Channel 2 Action News. The Senate Armed Services Committee will hold a hearing today to investigate growing problems in the military housing privatization program. More than 200,000 homes on military bases across the country are managed by private contractors. Well, a year-long investigation by the Reuters news agency turned up dangerous living conditions. Today, senators will ask housing contractors and Pentagon officials how they plan to address the military family's complaints about things like mold and water damage. Chip Reed is on Capitol Hill with the problems thousands say they are living with. This is just horrible listening to what these families are going through. Chip, good morning. Yes, good morning. Reuters says the Pentagon pays nearly $4 billion a year in rent to private property management contractors in nearly every state. But much of that housing is in disrepair, and military families have long said they feel they have nowhere to turn to get help. The floor. Josh and Lacey Sandin have lived in this house at Fort Meade in Maryland for over two years. At first, it, I mean, it looked clean. Everything was blank, white walls. <laughs> Instead of rent, the Air Force pays a basic housing allowance of nearly $2,200 a month directly to contractor Corvius Military Living. We started noticing issues from almost the very beginning. Appliances started breaking. Siding on their eight-year-old house was warped. You can see all along this wall. And they suspected mold growing on the floor and walls was affecting their children's health, something their doctor hasn't ruled out. Ear infections, sinus colds, it was one after the other after the other. According to the EPA, allergic reactions to mold are common and exposure can irritate the eyes, skin, nose, throat and lungs. Neighbors had a similar problem, mold and a burst pipe that left standing water in their living room. Look. Both families say the response from Corvius was extremely disappointing. It seems to be a very long, painstaking process to actually try to get them to do anything because mm -hmm. they want to they sweep it under the rug. A spokeswoman for Corvius declined to discuss specific cases, but acknowledged the company had let down some residents and said that while mold is a minor problem, they will be hiring an expert to review the company's policies. It felt like people were screaming. Shannon Razadin, a Navy wife, collected complaints ahead of today's hearing from more than 7,000 tenants across the nation through her group, the Military Family Advisory Network. They shared stories of black mold, of lead paint, of rats, roaches, bats. They're putting right. their lives on the line yeah. to protect and defend this nation, mm -hmm. and they're living in squalor. People don't have recourse, and so they don't have the opportunity to withhold a rent check. And often, they don't have the luxury of going to look at housing before they move. The Defense Department's own inspector general cited pervasive health and safety hazards at housing facilities. A Department of Defense spokeswoman told CBS News that the military and its housing partners continue to work together to review housing conditions and evaluate policies and procedures. I don't think there's a lot of command support to address housing issues. Crystal Cornwall will testify before the Senate today. After experiencing issues with a contractor at Camp Pendleton, she helped organize a Facebook group that now has nearly 2,000 members. Those are termites. Sharing stories Her like this one, expected. viewed more than 200,000 times. There is no way that any kind of service member can do their job when their family is not safe at home. The Pentagon told CBS News that military families have the same rights as anyone else, but many families have told us and Reuters that that simply is not true. They say that when they contact state and local authorities, they say they can't even come on the property. They have no jurisdiction because the housing is on federal land. Gail? Mm -hmm. All right, Chip, thank you very much. You know, I spent a lot of time growing up I in military housing, not only here in the United States, but, but overseas. But this is the most solemn vow, how you take care of your veterans and their families. And so they've got to fix this problem, which is why Congress is taking it head on. Pretty shameful what we just saw. Thank you.